Samsung's latest One UI 6.1.1 is all about AI. It's got awesome AI powered features like Sketch to Image, which turns your rough sketches into art. And you've also got something called the Portrait Studio, which will let you turn yourself into a comic, 3D cartoon, watercolor, or into a sketch. Pretty awesome, right? But what about the features that are not AI specific? I'm talking about the general changes that One UI update brings to Samsung smartphones. Well, let's check them out. Alright, so when you open a video in the built-in video player in the gallery, so just like this, now you can double tap on the right to skip forward in a video or double tap the left side to go back, just like you do on YouTube. If you try doing this on the older versions of One UI, it would just pause the video. So this is a nice addition to have. But keep in mind, it only works when you open the video in the built-in video player from this menu. Okay, so the way you answer calls on a Samsung smartphone is by swiping your finger over the answer key. So just like that. Now this update brings a new option which allows you to answer the call just by tapping on the answer button. So if you want to change this setting, you'll have to open the dialer, tap on these three dots and head on into the settings. Here tap on answering and ending calls and then change the gesture to answer calls from swipe to tap. And this is a personal choice so set this to whatever you feel comfortable with. You'll also notice another new feature which says answering using speaker. If you enable this, the phone is always going to use its loudspeaker in place of the earpiece speaker whenever there's no headset or a Bluetooth device connected. So you can see that once it is enabled, the phone is going to activate the speaker phone as soon as we answer the call. I also like what they've done with the built-in Samsung file manager. So what's new is that when you try to copy or move a file in the file manager, it now opens up a pop-up letting you select the folder in which you want to move or copy the file. And once you're done, it will go back to the previous folder you were in. Super convenient, right? On the older version, when you try to move or copy the file, you actually have to navigate out of the folder that you were in and then move the file. And once again, you'll have to manually go back to the previous folder you were in. So that's kind of inconvenient. I really like what Samsung has done here. In security and privacy, there's a feature called Auto Blocker, and this update brings the maximum restriction mode to the Auto Blocker. Enabling this will enhance the security of your phone, like it's gonna turn on the app protection which will scan the installed apps for malicious activity, then it's gonna block apps that require administrative privileges, then in Samsung Messages, it's gonna block auto-downloading attachments, hyperlinks, and remove location data when you share photos. And it also does some other stuff in the gallery like it will block shared albums and also remove the location data when you share photos through the gallery. So kind of a nice feature which will enhance the overall security of your phone. Now this technically qualifies as an AI feature but I don't really see it. But the thing is, if you've got the newer Galaxy S24 series, then you're also gonna get the photo ambient wallpaper which kinda reflects the local weather on your phone's lock screen. To set a photo ambient wallpaper, pinch in on the home screen and then head on into wallpaper and style. Then tap on change wallpapers and under create with AI, you'll need to select photo ambient. Now what's disappointing is that the S23 series will not be getting the photo ambient wallpaper feature. You can see that the option on the S23 Ultra is not even there. That's kind of sad because the S23 Ultra isn't even two years old. Um, anyways, once you tap on photo ambient, it's gonna ask you for the location permission to show you the local weather. But if you skip this, it will show you the weather of the city that you have selected in the weather app. So finally, after you pick a picture from the gallery, you'll see that the local weather of your city is gonna show up on the lock screen wallpaper. So if it's nice and sunny outside, the phone is gonna simulate the sun by showing you this bright animation on the top. If it's raining, you'll get a rain animation. 
and during the night the lock screen wallpaper is gonna dim itself and you can see even though it is the same wallpaper it's actually dimmer on the lock screen because of the ambient wallpaper feature all right, so here is another thing that I've noticed. If you're watching a video in the picture in picture mode, maybe you're watching something on YouTube. Now you can drag and drop the video onto the top or to the bottom of the screen to switch to the split screen view. This drag and drop method also works if you are watching a video using the built in video player in the picture in picture mode. So there you go. That's how it works. Another new non-AI feature is the ability to create animated stickers or a GIF out of motion photos. Let's try this out. So you can see that here we've got a motion photo and if you want to create a GIF or an animated sticker out of this, long press on the object that you want to clip and from these options you can select save as sticker or save as a GIF. And from the select sticker style menu we can select motion and save the sticker. So now we'll be able to use the animated sticker that we created out of a motion photo in text messaging. So there you go. Now speaking of the edge panels, you'll notice that the smart select screenshot edge panel is no longer there. This is because they've kind of integrated the smart select screenshot tool in the apps edge panel. It's here on the top right corner. Tapping on it will allow you to take a screenshot. Slightly different way of taking a screenshot but yeah, it's more or less the same thing. It's actually more functional than the previous version because now you've got the option to add the screenshot that you've taken directly to Samsung Notes. Then you can copy the screenshot to the clipboard. You've got the share panel. This will save the screenshot to the gallery and this allows you to extract text. And yes, you've still got the option of pinning the screenshot to the screen. So you can see this is way more functional than the previous Smart Select screenshot tool. But Samsung did end up removing a feature which was the ability to record a GIF through the Smart Select Edge panel. So if you want to record a GIF, first you'll have to do a screen recording and then convert the screen recording into a GIF through the gallery. That's kind of tedious and adds extra step. I would like to see Samsung bring back the ability to record a GIF in a future update. When you open the phone book on your phone, you'll see that your own contact will be listed on the top. And if you tap on it, you'll see a new feature which says create profile card. This is a feature which lets you create your very own customized profile card. You can add a picture or a video to your profile card and also customize the name. And once you're done customizing, head on into profile card and picture. Then make sure share profile card and picture is turned on. You can also change the privacy to share with everyone or contacts only. And that is it. Now when you make a phone call to a person whose contact is in your phone book, they're gonna see your profile card on their phone. So that is awesome and again they'll see your profile card whenever they make a phone call to you. So I think you guys already know that if you keep your finger on the screen while watching a video, the phone kinda turns the video into a slow-mo. But what's new is that when you let go of your finger, you get a pop-up which allows you to save that part of the video that you have just previewed in slow-mo. So there you go. This is gonna make turning videos into slow-mo super easy. When you swipe up in a photo to open the details, you're gonna see a new option which says live effect. And as you can see, this kinda turns the photo into a motion photo. I kinda like the 3D effect, but I'm not sure where I'm gonna use the live photo. And by the way, the phone is gonna save this as a video. So it's gonna be very easy to upload the live photo onto social media. All right, so that's pretty much it when it comes to the non-AI changes that the One UI 6.1.1 update brings to the S23 and the 24 series. And if you wanna watch the full video which includes the AI features, go check it out on the channel. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, like the video and share it with your family and friends. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.